Anyways, welcome to Thursday Tech Talk. Um, today we will be talking about how to stabilize your camera onto the Xeon Crane version 2. This tutorial could be used with other gimbals too, so don't just tune out. It's still the same basics on how to stabilize a gimbal. So th this is just the version I'm stabilizing, but everything else is exactly the same. You just gotta do it. Now, one of the things I'm not gonna be doing is just talking about the axis. Like, cause I don't know what a what that axis is called. I, s I remember I saw some tutorials. They're like, oh yeah, the Z axis, the raw roll axis. I don't know the names of them. I'm just gonna tell you which axis to move. So what we will be stabilizing is a uh, Sony A6300 with the 18-105 constant F4. It's a zoom lens, it's a really good lens. Why? Because um, the lens doesn't move when you zoom in. So the weight doesn't change, which is really good for gimbals. So that's the camera I really recommend on for gimbal use. So this is what, this is the camera we'll be stabilizing it. One of the things I recommend is getting this uh, little tripod. The, the, this is the Manfrotto tripod, but you could get any other tripod. It will be the same uh, use and it will come in handy for your gimbal stabilizer. This camera and this box was provided by my friend, Daniel Longoria, shout out to you. But anyways, he let me borrow his camera because he doesn't know how to stabilize his gimbal. And then some people asked me to make a tutorial on how to balance a gimbal. So what a better opportunity than to help a fellow filmmaker and help other filmmakers with this tutorial. So let's get started. Shout out to my wife because I'm using her camera, which is over here. Let's open up the gimbal, you know, you get your batteries, you get your chargers, you get everything. Uh, he hasn't used it, so it's a really good thing. So everything is still in the box, which is amazing. Makes experience even better. So first off, take everything you need for your gimbal, you know, take all this stuff out. One of the things I recommend you do when you're, um, uh, when you get your gimbal is make sure you try to uh, uh, calibrate it it'll help it. If not, if you just want to open it, then by all means, I haven't calibrated his, so I'll have to test it out and see, make sure it's good. But I'm pretty sure it should be good and then he should be rock solid to uh, take some shots once I stabilize it. So anyways, so one of the things you want to make sure is that your camera has all the accessories that it needs. So the battery's in there, the memory is in there, and make sure to take off the lens cap because you don't need the lens cap. So make sure that lens cap is gone and not in your camera because then you'll have to rebalance the whole thing so you don't want that now let's uh put the batteries inside the gimbal make sure everything's on your gimbal same way so you, with the with the zoom crane you put the negative side in the here so the negative in here and the positive on top now one thing with these uh zoom cranes that i do not like is that they get scratched up pretty easily i did not like that at all so after you got the batteries in there this is where I'd say get one of these because it's useful. I like putting it at the bottom. That way I could balance it while it's up and not have to put it on a tripod. So now that I have it here, you got to set it up like this. So make sure this uh, little knob right here. Here, let me see. Make sure this little knob right here is on top. Okay. So make sure this little knob is on top. So let me put this here. And then I'm going to move my camera over here because I... Notice that it's not aiming at this, so give me one second. Okay, now that the camera's aiming at the, that, I don't have to worry about not getting it in the shot. I usually like taking this thing off because uh, I don't use the little things, so I'm gonna take this off from him. You could use a little, what is it, the lens support, but I, don't, I, don't, I really don't feel it works. Sometimes you have to put the camera all the way back, so, okay. Now, if you have a quick release plate, like I said, I recommend that. I suggest you put it on the dove, uh, on the list, this little plate, because it'll be, it'll save you lots of time. But if not, you just gotta make sure and put it in. <clears throat> you just attach it like so. And one of the things you don't wanna worry about is getting it in the right position yet. That, don't worry about that. Just position it and make sure, look, I'm, I'm gonna show you. Make sure that this, this right here is straight. Make sure this is straight right here. This has to be straight because if it's not, then you'll struggle by balancing it. And once it's straight, make sure to lock it, but don't lock it in yet. Cause usually what you want to do is balance, put the camera, this end of the camera. Yeah, I'm gonna show this camera. 
you want to put this end of the camera closest to the to this uh closest to the motor so you want to put the camera as close to the motor that way it's easier to balance it if you don't have the quick release plate it's going to be easier to balance it if you just place it like this because all you have to do is remember to place it like this and make sure it's even to the plate so once you got it all the way to where you want it, that's when you completely tighten this one, which is the one that goes into the camera. You tighten this one, and once this one's tightened, you know that your camera won't move. Okay, so if you could tell the camera's, the gimbal was in balance. So the way I like to start is by moving the camera up or er, front to back. That's where you want to get started. I don't, like I said, I don't know what axis this is called, but you just want to worry about this one. So worry about that one first. So usually with a big heavy lens, you, you know you're going to have to push the camera all the way back. And then when it's tilting up, that you know that you have it too back heavy. And if it goes down, it's too front heavy. So you got to make, you want to balance it to where it stays like this. It doesn't move front or back, or I mean, it doesn't tilt down or up. Once you do that, you tighten the little, this little lever, you tighten it and then there you go. And then if I let go of it, you could tell that it's not falling. Now it's starting to fall uh, on its horizon. And that is fixed by moving this one. You see this one? I'm gonna show this camera now. You see this? You start moving this one second because your camera started, um, the gimbal started moving this side. And if you could tell the camera's still a little bit back heavy, I could tell. And make sure you fix all of those things first. Now, see, you gotta make sure it's about right. And then that should be it. I think, and you know what? I think there's a difference on these gimbals because mine doesn't have this one. It's a little bit different and it's actually longer, which is totally weird because we both buy it, bought it from Best Buy. So maybe it's something that ZU and changed recently or not, but. That is definitely weird that mine doesn't have this one because it's actually easier. No wonder it was so much easier than mine. Mine has like a longer one and it's like weird, but I guess Ziyun changes it. Now, one of the things that happened with mine as well is that the little joystick, which you control your pan and tilt, uh, broke on mine. So I don't know what that has to do with anything, but it, it happened. <laughs> okay, so now that you can tell that the camera's falling on its horizon, you like I said, you want to move this one. You unscrew it and then you start moving it. And you move it left to right until it stops falling on its horizon. On this one, I didn't have to do much. So all you have to do is lock it there. So now you're closer to having it fully balanced. As you could tell, it's not tilting up. I mean, falling, tilting down or tilting to, this, to the back and it's not moving on its horizon. The next thing you wanna balance is this, this side, this side. I'm gonna show this camera. You wanna balance this little thing with this, the lever closest to the motor. And the way you do that is when you hold the camera up, you could tell if I take it, hold it, if I tilt the camera up and wanna, and I, what you wanna do is keep it, when you keep it in this angle, it stays in this angle. The way to achieve that is by moving, by fixing this. So you wanna unloosen it. Since this camera is super heavy, I know I'm gonna have it to about there and then just test it out. Oh, it's way too much weight. So let's start off all the way to the top. And I kind of know this lens already, so I kind of knew it was gonna be at that spot. And all I did, if you have a Sony A6300 and you're 18 to 105, you wanna put it, you wanna put it, you wanna loosen it and put it all the way up and tighten it. And it's perfectly balanced now. As you could tell, if I hold it like that, it's perfectly balanced. Uh, I'm doing it actually really fast, I guess, because I've had a lot of experience with this lens and this setup. The only thing is that I have a variable ND filter, so it changes a little bit. So I gotta fine tune it a little bit more. But the way you know you'll have perfect balance on this motor uh, lever is when you tilt it up like that, it stays up like that. So when you see it, that's perfect balance. As you could tell, if you move it like that, it's not moving. If you move it like that, it's not moving. So you have the perfect balance. But if you just turn on your gimbal, you might tell, if you turn on your gimbal after this, you're gonna tell that it's gonna be tilting or moving and you're like, what's wrong? It's because you need this uh, axis down under here. 
So you need this axis right here. That's the last axis you want to balance. And if you don't balance that one, trust me, you will notice that your camera is going to be uh, twitching. The, the, the footage isn't going to be perfect enough. So you want to make sure this one is the next one you you uh, you fix. Okay, and the way you you and the way you um, I guess test that this one is uh, balanced is you go you can hold your camera like this and you let go. As you can tell, this section right here moves up or down depending on your camera. So if I let it let it go, it moves up. So if, demonstration, it moves up. You see that? You see how that moves? You don't want that. So the way I recommend it, the way I recommend fixing it is putting it down and then looking at the actual numbers that it has here. I usually like starting at about, I guess I want to say it's three. So you keep it at three and tighten it and then work from there, depending on how your camera moves. So if you hold it again, you could tell it that's way too much and it's moving crazy like that. So then you want to go back and I'm pushing back to about, I'm sorry, that was, uh, I guess, three and a half. So push it back to all the way to three and then try it again. So you can tell it's a little bit better. It's still not, it's still not perfect. As you can tell, it's moving like that. You don't want it to do that because that's not balanced. So then you want to move it to 3.3 .3 and tighten it and then see how that works. And that's basically it. As you can tell, it's almost there. So I'm either, I'm, I think I'm gonna go down one. So 3.2. And you'll see the markings. The markings are in, like, I can't really show it, but the markings aren't in here, the numbers. So then you try it one more time. And there you have it. It's perfectly balanced. You see that? It's not moving. It's not doing anything. Most people skip this one and then they complain that their footage is shaky. I, I think that's the reason why. As you can tell, it's still not as perfect. Well, it is perfect. Now, one of the things I want to tell you is that even though it took me about maybe 10 minutes explaining it, and that's because I had to do all this other stuff, when you first start, it's going to take you a lot, at least 45 to an hour, even if you have experience. Why? Because it's different. One of the things I was struggling a lot with is getting the camera on it because it's kind of complicated if you don't have a tripod. When I first got it, I didn't have it. I put it on a tripod and you still struggle with just getting it on this first one. If you have this, it it's just the must. That's why the Zoom Crane version, not the version two, I'm sorry. That's why the Crane two comes with it because it's a necessary, it's just necessary and it just makes your life easier. Sometimes the horizon isn't perfect. So when you go like that, it has to stay like that. You see that it's perfect. Cause sometimes if it's not perfect, I, I've noticed that if it, if it tilts up or moves it's not perfect now since it's new i could feel that all the knobs work i i think the one i got is kind of defective because like i said the button on the joystick fell and it was just, just like shocking to me after just using it for two weeks it just fell and the other thing is this lever you see this one see how this looks mine doesn't look like that it's like a silver lever so i don't know what happened with that but anyways that's how you balance the gimbal and I'm just gonna tell you about this gimbal. Um, I guess I'll be reviewing the gimbal later, but one of the two things I don't like, I don't like that this finish is weird. So any little, if it bumps against each other, against itself, against anything else, it's gonna scratch up so easily. And by easily, I mean like I could scratch it with my nail and the little paint finish that they added is gonna come off. The other thing I don't like is uh, these two uh, buttons the on button and the mode button. I, I always get confused with them. I I can never figure it out, especially on the go and on, you know, running gun, like you're just clicking the buttons. So it's kind of hard to differentiate if you're just touching it, but you could get used to it. Now, when you turn it on, let's just turn it on for keepsake. And you, as you could tell, the gimbal is stabilized. Now, I like to tweak the settings and make sure it's not fast enough. So just the modes, I'm gonna demonstrate the modes. The first mode is just, uh, the, it follows your pan. If you go up, it won't go up. As you can tell, it just is. If you hit the mode button once, it's gonna lock the camera. So you're not moving it. 
so it's just moves this is the perfect you want mode one when you're just following a subject that's walking in a straight line if you want to follow the pan or you know follow someone as they leave then you go to back to the pan mode and follow them as you know they're moving now when you hit it once and you lock it hit it twice and then you fully unlock the camera so follow your pan and your tilt as you can tell it's pretty fast one of the things i recommend you doing is going into the Zune app and changing the settings and bringing it down. If you bring it down, the, the gimbal will move slower and it'll make your footage look nicer. Because if it's fast, you'll, you'll notice it's like, it's too fast and it won't look good. So if you slow it down, it'll help you. If you go back to the lock mode, if you change the settings as well, as you can tell, I'm moving it with the joystick and it's moving so fast, you could change those settings on there too. And it makes it look nice. Sometimes all you have to do is hold the camera and make these tilts like this. This is really fast. And if you're shooting 4K, it won't look good, you know? But if you slow down the movements, you could get some nice cinematic stuff. I got some really nice stock footage like this and it worked handy. But anyways, that's how you basically stabilize the, the, the Zhiyun Crane version two. Other, other gimbals will be the same. Like I said, one of the things that you'll struggle as a beginner Whereas this is your first time using it, it's just attaching it to the main part. So attaching it on here is actually the most difficult thing you, you do. Like I said, the two things you wanna get is these extra legs, these tripod legs, cause they'll help you. Not only that, you could use it as extra support, put it on your stomach, like it'll help you. It'll help you mostly to stabilize and stabilize it on the go. I mean, just to be able to balance it and ba balance it on the go, it'll help you so much. Also, if you stabilize it and you don't want to break it down and you gotta go to the restroom, it comes in handy because you could just place it on the floor and go, you know, pee or poop, whatever you want, but it's really handy. The other thing, like I said, I recommend is getting the quick release plate because if you don't have it, guess what? To take it off, you have to completely unscrew this and then rebalance it again. You won't have to balance the, the, the bottom one or the the motor, but you might have to balance the horizontal and the front and back because you, unless you make markings, you won't remember or you won't get it as perfect. So then you'll have to rebalance it without a quick release plate. If you get a quick release plate, you'll make your life easier. Like I said, the two things you wanna get down for sure is having everything on your camera and having it off. If you want ND filters, place it before you balance it because if not, you're gonna have to rebalance. <laughs> One day I didn't have my batteries in there and guess what, I had to rebalance it. With the quick release plate, you save yourself a lot of time. So I re really recommend you get a quick release plate. Now I'm gonna tax, make sure you get the ones that don't have the little tightening squeeze and that gets in your way. So I'll try and put some in the links so you can get. But like I said, I'll put a link, link down for this little these little legs because you're gonna need them you're gonna need them but that should be it you should be able to get running like i said it took me like 10 minutes maybe six minutes on this video but it's gonna take you about 45 to an hour just to get it done if you have more experience you're gonna take maybe 10 or 15 minutes just to get used to it if you had ZU and cranes before, then it's gonna be, it's gonna take you like five minutes to balance it. Now, it could take you a while to balance it if you have things that move. Like I said, his is really sturdy because it's it's not, well, yeah, it's moving a little bit. So that's the other thing I don't like, that this thing isn't as tight. So sometimes you'll actually move it. The camera will move. It'll like wiggle in there. So then you'll lose your balance, but Basically that's it, as you could tell. As you could tell, it's not moving. I mean, I've walked with this before and it keeps it perfectly balanced. Now, to do the updates, you connect your cable on there and then you do it, it's kind of weird. I mean, it has, no, I'm sorry, I, I messed up. That This is for the, for the zoom, the zoom control. I haven't used it, I don't feel like you need to use it, but it's there. But anyways, this is perfectly balanced. Like I said, it's gonna take you an hour to 45 minutes. Now, please, if you like this video, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, share this with your friends. If you wanna see more tutorials or tips and tricks for filmmaking, just let me know which, what you'd like to see and I'll get it done for you. But anyways, have a good day.